Hello friends. Uh, so today I thought I would um, share with you some some jelly printing techniques of things I found at the dollar store. So here you can see a pile of things I found at the dollar store. So uh, let's see what kind of prints we can get out of these. Which one to start with? Let's start with Start with this one, laundry bag. All right, first things first, I'm gonna get my jelly plate out. Um, I've just got mine mounted on a piece of plexiglass. Just keep it uh, flat and so that I can pick it up and move it around, it makes it really easy. Uh, so let's open some of this stuff up. And let's see, this is just a laundry bag, but it's got an interesting texture to it. So I wanna see what I can do, but I think I'm gonna actually cut it in half in pieces. So we're gonna take this. Uh, maybe I should cut it this way. Okay, good enough. All right, so, um, paint. I'm gonna start with this today. Purple gray, put a little bit on there, get my brayer out. Looking for a nice even coating of paint. Looks good. Roll that brayer off and let's try our texture, see what happens. So I'm just gonna put that over top. And then before my paint dries, oh, I can feel it sliding around. This is gonna be an interesting one. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Kind of a model kind of a texture. And then if I take that off, let's see what else I get. Ooh, cool. I like that a lot. Neat. Okay, that has some potential. That's the laundry bag. Uh, what else we got? Fridge liner. This one is uh, like a plastic sheet that has some raised dots on it. Uh, um, okay, it looks like it's quite long, but let's let's see how this how this goes. I'm gonna use the same color again. Nice, even coating. All right, and we're gonna push this into the paint. This one will probably give me a lot more regular dots. Just needs a second. All right, that's got some pretty good paint coverage. Let's see if I can get that other um, ghost print off of here. Picked it up in places. That's interesting. That's a nice, uh, like kind of a grungy texture. Cool. All right. Um. What else I got here? I've got some dish scrubbers and I've got this, which really intrigues me. This is just a, like a trivet, I think. Let's take the tag off. Um, all right, let's see what we get with these. 
So most of these pages I will probably end up using in collage or printing over top to make more prints. All right, let's try the trivet. It's got like a honeycomb pattern. And maybe one of these guys. I don't really care about the thing because I mean, I'm just using it for printing, but let's see. Interesting. These would also work pretty nicely, probably um, printing on uh, something else with the using the object to print. Look at that. That's cool. All right, let's try this one. See what that one does. Might be dry already, though. Oh, oh awesome. <laughs> I like that a lot. I'm excited. Okay, let's see what we get here. Kind of had a lot of paint on it, but you can see some texture. I wonder if the other one will come up nicely. So I'm just using some basic cardstock here. I find it's got um, enough weight to it to kind of stand on its own and it takes the paint nicely. It also is good enough for me to work into later if I decide to use, um, you know, something else. Uh, pencil crayons or Posco markers or whatever. Ooh, that's interesting too. Cool. Some cool textures coming on here. All right. Let's see what else I got. Um, let's go with these. I've got some decorative um, kind of mesh and ribbon burlap. Maybe we'll switch colors with this too. I bought these just for jelly printing, uh, so they're going to get all covered in paint, but that's, that's totally okay. This one, I think, will be particularly interesting. So I'm just going to take the whole thing off, because I'm not really keeping it for anything else anyway. Um, we'll take this out. Maybe cut a piece off of this. I don't know what I would use this whole roll for, but for a section for gel printing could be a lot of fun. And then I've got this like burlap, just a tabby weave. It's got some good texture to it. I usually, when I cut pieces for things like this, I usually cut them long enough to cover my full jelly plate. Um, that way, if I want to do like a stripe or something, I'm not dealing with empty edges. Okay, uh, what color should we use? Let's go with quinacridone magenta. And I'm just kind of going to mix it right into uh, like that purple that I still have on my brayer and everything. And I'm just doing some textures and tests anyway. So, all right. This one is more transparent, you can see. Nice, even coat. All right, let's see here. I'm going to start with maybe this. I'm going to put that right there. Oh, it's not sitting flat, but I can kind of just like smooth it out with my fingers. Uh, let's take this one as well. That's the burlap. Just kind of smooth it out with my fingers. And what else? Maybe this guy. This one's going to be the same thing, but I'm going to just... Whoosh. I went right over that extra thread there, but that's totally okay. Okay, let's take them off. See what happens.
Oh, the burlap texture is really nice. This is kind of weird, but I wonder if I can, um, I wonder if I can work with that. I want to try that one again. Actually, I want to try that one again slightly differently. So let's put on some more paint. Roll it out. This is a really thin layer this time. Okay, this time I'm going to try that same texture, this one, um, and I'll try this one as well. This is like the decorative mesh. Um, and then, actually I'm going to use some of this deli paper. This is a much thinner paper. It really allows me to kind of pick up what's in between the holes of things. So, start at the bottom, push it down and get in the holes we'll see it's not always uh so easy to do but it's also i mean it's printmaking it's not rocket science so if it's not perfect that's kind of okay i like this texture though you can see it right through the paper let's see what else we can do we can get more paint out of there oops ripped it <laughs> that's all right Okay, so that's the first one with the deli paper. And then I should get another print out of this. Oh, half a print out of this. <laughs> Put my cardstock down. See what comes up. Okay, I'm not super happy with this. I thought it was going to be really nice, but it's, uh, oh, what if I did something like that? Look. And just kind of pull it apart maybe that's worth some more experiments but I thought it was gonna be better than it was <laughs> all right ooh so that's the um, the mesh decorative mesh plastic mesh cool okay um, what else we got Let's maybe go with some green. Do I even have green? Green isn't a color I use a lot of, apparently. It's all the way down in the bottom of my paint bin. <laughs> okay, maybe a different brayer would be good. Okay, so, Whoop. all right, this is a phthalo cyanine green. Roll it out. It's kind of transparent again. This one will likely have um, leftover residue from the other prints. So I can see the purple kind of in the background where it didn't pick up from that, uh, the stuff, the burlap. These are also from the dweller store. They're just like foam leaves, but they have some texture to them. So I don't know what they're going to do, but you know what? Give it a go. See what happens. All right. So I just want to push them in a little bit. I could do a print where I pick up all the outline, uh, but I kind of want to see what these things are going to do for texture. So we're just going to push them down a little bit. Try and pick up some of that paint. And then, I never have any fingernails, so this is kind of always tough. I'm just gonna use, um, just gonna use a palette knife to pick up the edge of that, so I don't have to touch it. Okay. This looks like it might be interesting. Let's see what happens. interesting for sure it would be great um layered over a lot of other things you can see my brayer lines in here though that's not great but you know what for overprinting or for collage i'm cool with that all right what else should we test 
Um, I got these foam numbers. Let's open that up. Should we stick with the green? Yeah, let's stick with the green. Alright, uh, I can never remember with these kinds of things if I want to be forward or backward. I'm gonna guess uh, that I want to be backwards because I'm gonna flip the print. So let's just put these in. Maybe kind of use it as a stamp. I got a seven and a six. Oops, kind of moved around a little bit. These might be better to like mount on something. try one more we'll just put the four over here they're sturdier than they look which is nice because I kind of thought they'd fall apart the first time I tried them so you know what let's overprint this over some of the um the purple one I'm gonna print it over that let's see what happens interesting I don't um I wish those um letters or numbers kind of picked up a little bit more paint because uh, it would be great if they were pretty much opaque uh but I might just have to make a stencil for that that's easy enough <laughs> all right uh let's see what else I got here I've got some feathers this I've seen done before um but I haven't tried it. So I'm just gonna take a few of these and see how things go. These are uh, dollar store feathers. So, you know, they might not be the best quality, but that's kind of okay. So I'm gonna leave this green paint on there, but maybe add some blue over top. Yeah, and I need to clean off my brayers here. Just a second. The best way to clean your brayer, wet wipes. Always wet wipes. They're kind of magical. So I'm just going to wipe it down. Okay, easy peasy. And the other one. I like to have two because I work really fast and um, it's just easier to have two when you, you know, you need a brayer quick and, you know, the one you want for green has purple on it. So... That's okay, but I think if I had more than two, it'd just get overwhelming, so <laughs> we're going to stick with two. Okay, blue paint. Whoop. This is the light blue permanent. Just gonna roll that around. not to get so many brayer marks in there this time. Using a lighter hand. Okay, what do we got here? I don't know if I should kind of mix them up a little bit or mess them up a little bit, I should say. Yeah, we'll give it a go. I think they probably have more character when they're uh, not perfect. This one's kind of a piece. Alright, let's put this one right here. Okay, I think this is going to be kind of a two-part print. Because um, I'd like to pick up the texture and stuff from the, um, like the stem, <laughs> if that makes sense, from the feather. So I'm kind of just going to push that down really good. And then we'll kind of pull up half of it. Oh, that's cool already. I'm gonna pull out the feathers. 
Um, I'm only pulling up half of it because I don't want to lose my registration. You could set up something a lot more. You know what? I'm going to take this right off. See, there's the feathers, which is the background. I changed my mind because I decided I like that and I decided that this probably will make a cool print on its own because there's also enough paint in the background that it'll probably pick that up too. All right. Those are some interesting shapes on this one. Um, like here, this is quite delicious. Look at that. And the texture over here, I could see that being useful for things other than feathers too. All right, I think I can reuse these, but I probably should let them dry first. So I'm just gonna kind of throw them off to the side. Ugh, my hands are getting messy. That's totally okay. Messy hands is it, happy hands. Me, bleh. Messy hands is a happy heart, right? <laughs> All right. Okay, that one's not what I expected. Um, but it's interesting. <laughs> You, you can see the residue from the letters in here, from the numbers. I got a six, and I think there's an eight up there. You can see the feathers here. Um, but I think I need to play with that a little bit more to um, get a really nice effect with that. But that's totally okay. This is just the first try um, with things I've found in the dollar store. So, yeah. Okay, let's put some more, maybe some more blue. Yeah. Okay. Roll that out. Nice even coating. Okay, there's a few things left in here. I have some hair bands which I thought could be interesting. They slide around. I need to maybe attach some string or something to that so I don't have to move it around so much when I try and pick it up. Because it just slip slides. Um, and then I have this cat toy, which I thought would be kind of fun. Um, but I want to take the bell out of it, I think. Oh, it's way too big. Okay, we're just going to take the bottom part off, and it'll be a noisy print making tool. This one, I'm just kind of rolling it around, trying to get some of those textures in there. I feel like this would be better um, with less paint. And it's really messy. <laughs> it's okay. Trusty wet wipes. They're very good for that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. I want to put a few more of these in here. I might, um, I'd have to add that to like a piece of cardboard or something. Let's see what happens here. Oh, too much paint on the on the gel plate. There, just stuck to my fingers. Even better. Okay, let's see what we get. Look at this. More feathers. Try those out too. <laughs> the only thing I would be um, careful about with your gel plate is you don't want to use anything sharp because you don't want to actually damage the plate. Uh, it can take a lot of textures and a lot of different kinds of objects and mark making tools, but I'd stay away from anything sharp. So no knives, no needles, um, anything like that. Uh -uh. 
Okay, let's see what happened here. Okay, well, that's interesting. Um, huh, I think I like the, the first few prints with the hairband first. Because it seems to, well, it doesn't have as much paint on it, so it actually picks things up. So, that might be something to remember. Washing, washing, washing. Okay. Interesting, though. This is interesting, too. I don't think I could have gotten that texture another way. It kind of reminds me a little bit of this pattern. Um, which could be cool to combine somehow, even though it's a lot more irregular. All right, I wonder if I can pick up any of the rest of this. It might be too dry already. So none of these prints are masterpieces, um, but that's kind of the way jelly printing goes, is you kind of just do it, layer things up, collage them together, yeah, nothing, uh, and kind of see what happens. It's really hard to predict what kind of results you're gonna get, um, but that's okay, that's part of the fun of it. So, okay, I'm gonna try and pick up, um, put down a, pick up layer to get some of these marks off here uh, and that'll also give me a cooler place to start or sorry a cleaner place to start when I start with the next two couple of textures that I got so we're just gonna put a pretty neutral light color in really thin layer because I just want to pick up all that uh, paint that's on my plate and get some of these brayer marks out. Same piece of paper. All right, when you're doing a pickup layer, you kind of want to just leave it on for a little bit longer than usual. Um, that really thin layer of paint will dry and that will help pull all that dried paint up off of your plate. So I'm going to clean my brayer in the meantime. We'll just give that a minute to sit. Okay, and the other one I think is okay still. A little bit purple. Okay, so when you're waiting for your pickup layer, you can kind of tell if it still feels really cool, it's wet. But this feels better, but you can also kind of take a peek by looking at the corner. And it looks like we're pretty dry, maybe not perfectly, but I don't care. Look at this, this is a great texture. So that's just picking up what was left on the plate. I can see myself using this in collage, especially this part up here. Like, yeah, that's really cool. So... Okay, um, next I have some Easter grass. Um, I think I want to try this with the green. We'll see, um, see if I can get some textures out of it. I have a feeling I don't want this to get everywhere though. <laughs> oh, they've picking up grass for years. Okay, maybe we'll just take a handful out. That's probably plenty. Okay, let's go with green. <laughs> this is a really pretty color, but I don't actually use green all that much. I don't know why. I think my color range is more like blue, purple, pink, orange. Yeah, I like green. I just don't know how to work with it as much, I think. Especially greens like this, because it's not really a natural green, right? Like, I wouldn't use that for any, like, plants or anything like that. So, I don't know. 
Okay, let's just kind of drape these in. Kind of, they're gonna make interesting lines. But the reason I got these is I thought they would make like a cool like bird's nest or something. So this might be a couple of experiments. Okay, so let's see what happens here. I'm just gonna put it on top and flatten it. Try not to move it around too much while I press it down. Oh, I can feel all that grass like crinkling under there. <laughs> okay, pull that up. Oh, cool. That's a great texture. I really like that. That's That has some potential for sure. And you never get the same print twice. All right, let's pull this stuff off. Oh, I like this stuff already, but I can tell you it's going to be a big mess. <laughs> but that's usually what I like is what makes a big mess. So, okay, pull that all out. Let's get a fresh sheet. I think I'm going to like this one a lot too. Ooh, yeah, that's that's totally interesting. That uh, fake Easter stuffing. Okay, let's see what we got. Oh, 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 oh yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, hoo, hoo. That's gonna have some potential. That's for sure. Wow. I like it a lot. All right, let's see if we can do like um, a little bit of a different texture with that. I'm gonna use the green again. This is a really light coat, but that's okay. Okay, try and use the same stuff. I think I'm just going to kind of like twist it into something here. Yeah, as I drop it all over the, uh, all over everything. So I think I'm making like a little like nest or something. Just kind of twist it up together. Yeah, and maybe we'll just put some more of these kind of around it. I this I think this um, material you kind of just have to like let it do what it's gonna do because I don't think I don't think it's gonna be very easy to control. I think everything you get is gonna be pretty organic. So let's see. Oh yeah, I can feel there's a lot of space between the paper and the gel plate. So I'm just gonna try and like really push that down. See if I can get a good impression picked up all that paint that's in the middle of that little little ball there and see. Okay, first pull. Okay, resisted quite a bit. This is also because my my um, layer was quite thin. I think it started to dry before I pulled the print. Um, but we'll pull all this out. See if I can pick that up. If I can't, we'll let it dry. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to pull it with the background color. You can kind of feel it, it's not, no, maybe it's transferring a little bit. It's not gonna get it all though. Yeah, very, very, very faint. Um, okay, let's um, get another color in there and see if we can pick the rest of that up. What color though, that's the question. Uh, I'm gonna go with the blue. Again, I want a pretty thin layer because I'm just using this layer essentially to, well, add a little bit of color, but also just to pick up that green paint, paint in there. Try and get a nice even coat. Without too many brayer lines. Okay. okay. Put it 
down. And again, I'm going to let this one sit for a minute. Um, well, I'll do the activity I usually do when things need to sit. Clean the brayer. Okay. It's an easy. I can feel it. It's still a little bit cool. Okay, well, got some texture there. You can kind of see that little nest thing that I made. Um, that's worth playing with some more. Cool. Okay, I got one more thing to try. Um, I thought it was funny. I have no idea if it's going to work or not, but I'm kind of wondering how this is going to do. <laughs> it might just make me laugh. It might make me cry. We'll find out. So, purple. Get out of here. Okay, nice full layer, and this one is the squishy thingy. Big, squishy, wibbly, wobbly. Just kind of making some texture. Maybe I'll just kind of roll it in there in the bottom. Oh, lots of paint everywhere. Bye. <laughs> okay, I need a I need a wet wipe just for this guy. It's always underneath of everything. Texture looks interesting though. I'm uh, curious to see how that comes out. Okay, let's put the paper down. Let it sit while we wipe that thing off. See how it goes. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> Uh, okay, he might need to go in the sink. You know what, though? Most of the time I don't even bother wiping too many things off because uh, I'm just going to roll them and paint again anyway. So as long as it's not something I'm going to give to a kid or, you know, use in my house. Which, let's be real, dollar store, dollar item, it's worth a shot. Um, purple, purple everywhere. Okay. All right, let's get some of this purple off me. You know, you're an artist when your fingers are always covered in paint. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see how this is doing. <laughs> this is a cool texture too. Look at that. That would be great for something like grass or, you know, even water. You could see there would be uh, some textures in here. It'd be pretty, pretty interesting. Cool. Okay, well, that's all the new stuff I had from the dollar store. Um, I do want to show you a couple things that um, I've had earlier. Uh, because... Well, because they're cool and because they're kind of staples in what I do, actually. So I'm going to put up just a little bit more paint on the plate and show you a few other stencils. Well, a few other objects that I actually use as stencils. So, yeah, and they happen to come from the dollar store, too, but not from today. Okay, so purple paint. Oh, well, I can tell I have a hair in it because it keeps showing up in a regular... Um, regular place. So let's just pull that out. Yeah, gone. Okay, so some of the things I got from the dollar store um, earlier. This is actually uh, just a piece of like drawer liner. 
um, but it makes a really nice kind of regular check pattern. And see here. See, pretty pretty regular check pattern. That's useful for a lot of things. Um, maybe we'll do some blue with that purple. Just kind of mixing it in. I don't really care too much about the color or the um, the way the color ends up on the plate right now because I'm mostly just checking or sorry testing textures and anything I don't like I can always just reprint over top. One of the beauties of jelly printing is that there's I mean first of all it's addictive and then you know nothing is ever like not good enough because you can just overprint it use it for collage or use it for say a brayer paper that sort of thing. Okay here's another thing from the dollar store you can tell I've used this before this is like the plastic canvas stuff um, so maybe I'll just do a portion here. So this is gives some really interesting texture as well. Boom, okay, take that off. Um, and then um, I got, this is a piece of a dish rack. It's like a flexible dish rack. You can tell it's kind of got two sides. There's a like a wide side and a skinny side. I'm gonna show you both. That's the skinny side. And then, the wide side. I'm going to take a paper, pick those up. So you can see there's some texture there, but I think the interesting part in this one is what it actually left behind on the plate. Um, so I'm going to let it dry for a second here. And we'll actually um, use some of the um, titanium ecru paint to pick that up because I think that will be really neat. So. Pick up layer dry and we're gonna wipe the brayer in the meantime. What happened to my wet wipes? What you can't see off camera is just the like pile of paper and stuff and I mean as I jelly print it just gets worse. Well worse than even what you can see here so yeah. <laughs> it's part of the fun though. I like making a mess. Okay, a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of, oops, I should have rolled that off first. A little bit of cleaning. Okay, let's see how we got here. Oh, oh yeah, 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 I like this a lot. Woo hoo hoo, see? Isn't that cool? Awesome. I'm going to have to try this some more. I even like the way the I got two different colors here. They kind of blend one into the other. That's pretty cool. So we're going to try that one some more. Okay. Um, let's go with the blue again. I got a few more um, actually placemats from the dollar store um, that I'm going to give a go here. Well, actually, I use them quite often. I just thought uh, I should show you as well. Oh, 
Okay, nice even blue coat. Um, okay, so these ones, um, it's actually a giant placemat from the dollar store. You can see I've cut the edge off. That's, I mean, just so that I can, uh, like get a straight edge on there. Um, I have three, so I'm going to do this kind of in three parts, I think. Uh, we're going to put that one there. Maybe. <laughs> this one is like a giant leaf. So let's put this guy... Maybe like this. Oh, and move around a little bit. And then I have this giant like Easter one. It's shaped like an egg. Um, but what I really like is the patterns inside. So let's just take a corner of this here. See how that goes. Okay, and now I'm gonna pick this up with some of the deli paper again because these are a little thicker. It kind of needs to get in between all of the holes. So I'm just gonna try and use the thinner paper to pick up all those little spots in there. I don't really care too much about the impression that I get on the deli paper because um, it moves around and you know that's okay it's good for collage. Okay so I get that I'm gonna try and pick up some of these. Yeah the thing about these um, placemats is if they're too thick it's hard to get in between all the holes to pick up the paint. And also just like, you know, use the palm of your hand or the, the ball of your hand, I guess, and pull up what you can. So that'll get used in collage or something. Just a piece of deli paper. I'm gonna pull these off. down. Okay, let's see. So it still feels a little bit cool. So I'm going to let it sit for a second. Okay, let's pull it up. See what happens here. So again, some really interesting texture. So you can see here's the um, the Easter egg, right? And that's the leaf. And then this is the flower, the big flower one. Yeah. Okay, so these are the prints I got out of the texture samples that I did. Um, no particular order, but I'm gonna try and point out what each of them is. So this is the burlap, um, the burlap roll like this. Uh, and then I got the other, there's a couple other textures of um, burlap that I tried here that I wasn't super thrilled with. Uh, this is the trivet with the honeycomb pattern. And then I have the, uh, up here is the dish scrubby thing. That's the honeycomb pattern just pressed onto the paper afterwards. I think I like this best. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that a lot, I think. Uh, another print of that. Actually, I think it was probably the first pull. Um, so this is probably the second pull, and then this one would have been the first pull. Uh, this is the laundry bag. It's got a really great texture. Like, I can see that being useful for things, too. Uh, feathers. That was the first pull. This is a pickup sheet for the, the uh, placemats. This is, I think it was the um, drawer liner. The check pattern? No, this was the fridge liner with the dots. So it's pretty similar to the check pattern as well, but uh, a little variation isn't always a bad thing. Uh, okay, the dish rack thing and then the plastic um, canvas. This is the drawer liner here. This is the wibbly wobbly wormy thing. Actually, I really like this. I'm pleasantly surprised because I didn't know what we were going to get from that, but that's really cool. Uh, okay, the fake Easter grass. This was, I think, uh, my probably my third pull to clean up the plate. No, oh, there's a piece of the Easter grass in there. Uh, this was one of the prints with the Easter grass. Uh, you can tell I didn't put enough um, paint on the plate because it's really like it started to dry before I could pull it up. So that'll influence your prints as well. This is a really um, light one where the um, 
I'd picked up this print already, but the um, paint had dried on the plate, so I didn't really get much of. Uh, another one. This is great texture. Like, I can really see myself using this for things, too. Like, and you'd never get the same texture twice, or the same composition twice. Um, the other one, this would look really cool, um, like over printed over something. If I use an opaque color, like a, a titanium white or even like a Mars black and just let the, um, the underprint show through, that would be really, really fun. Uh, okay. So this is the hairband right here. This was the pull up print that I did. Um, and the, um, the cat toy, which is funny cause it just about disappears down here. This one was kind of a disaster. This is the um, feathers are in here, uh, but I didn't clean off my plate before. There was lots of green underneath, so you can see some of the um, texture left over from the burlap, uh, some of the like burlap ribbon. I don't know what you would use this for, some sort of crafty thing, you know? Yeah, so I mean, I wanna play with that some more. Um, you can really see in some of these areas, you can really see the, like the details in the textures of the feathers. Uh, but I want to play with that further because this print is a disaster, but it's, it's got some potential. This is the cat toy rolling it around on the plate. I think it would work better with less ink or less paint because you can see, I've just like pushed the paint around here. Um, these are the hair bands, the curly ones. Uh, and then we got the letters. Or sorry, the numbers. I don't know why I always mix that up. <laughs> uh, so the numbers that I printed backwards so that they would show up properly. Um, and they are overprinted on, what did I use for this one? This white one. This is the first print I think I did with the laundry bag. And then the, the foam leaves. I should try um, actually printing the leaf part, like using this using this as a stamp rather than just picking up the ink. I could, I could stamp into the ink and then put that on something else and stamp like that. That could be really, really cool. Um, we'll see. Experiments. It's all experiments. Uh, this is the, um, decorative mesh, they call it. It's like, it's really, really plasticky. Um, but I can see like even manipulating this could be really fun and get some interesting, uh, kinds of textures and things too. Like if you could get a print out of that, that would be really cool. So I'm going to play with that one further too. And the pickup from the, uh, dish rack. This one I think is my favorite print of the day. Um, I want to do some more because this is really cool. The way it kind of has the, the two colors flowing together, but then the, um, like the ecru color underneath as well. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and this is the last one I did. This is from the placemats. So we've got the flower one up here, and then there's the leaf one here, and then this is the Easter one with the, um, kind of the, like, row patterns, I guess you could call them. Um, yeah, so that's it. My plate is a little dirty, but you know what? That's goodies for next time, so... Anyway, um, I just wanted to show you the prints that happened from the session today. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching.